The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Let's delve into what we came to do today, glycolysis. So it's a metabolic pathway that actually breaks down or degrades glucose into pyruvate. So what I want to mention in this case is in glycolysis, you have a six carbon sugar usually. So we're going to be talking about glucose the entire time. That's a simple sugar that we're going to focus on. Now glucose is a six carbon sugar. So in the molecule, uh, in the process of glycolysis, that six carbon glucose molecule is actually broken down into two molecules of a three carbon pyruvate. So you have a six carbon compound, a six carbon glucose is broken down into two three carbon compounds, which is the pyruvate. Now glycolysis occurs ex almost exclusively in the cytosolic interface, and it results in the net gain of two ATP molecules. Now that is what I referred to earlier on as substrate level phosphorylation. It happens anaerobically without the input of oxygen as a consequence of the breakdown of that glucose molecule. Now, hmm, let's talk about something really interesting here. The fact that glycolysis actually happens without the input of oxygen tells us something really interesting. And I'm talking about evolution here, okay? I want you to stay with me. Because of the simple fact that glycolysis does not require oxygen, that would lead us to infer to believe that it's probably, it's probably a process that evolved early, very early in the history of life. And when I mean early, I mean before the formation or before the emergence of photosynthetic organisms that actually produced or released oxygen into the atmosphere. Remember that, oxygen wasn't always present, right? So the fact that a process like glycolysis evolved without the use or without the input of oxygen, when several other processes, uh, more specifically the next process, is dependent on the presence of oxygen, leads us to believe that it's a process that actually developed really early on in the history of life to produce energy without the input of oxygen, because oxygen wasn't there, right? Think about that for, for a moment. It's really, really interesting to try and contextualize some of these things from an evolutionary sp perspective at times. Now, back to what we're talking about. So for each molecule of glucose that goes through um, glycolysis, a bunch of things are produced. I've already told you that we produce two pyruvates. Okay, we also produce two ATP molecules, like I just said right here. A net gain of two ATP molecules, such a level of phosphorylation. And we also produce 2NADH, that powerful reducing agent right there. So those are the main products of this process. It wouldn't hurt you to commit those to memory. It's really important to know what the net gain or the net products produced in this process are. A lot of questions are centered around that key concept or around knowing that key piece of information. Now glycolysis in and of itself actually involves uh, a sequence of about 10 separate reactions. And we can divide these reactions into two distinct phases. <laughs> so the first phase would be the investment of energy or the phases or the stages of the reaction that require ATP or that require the input of ATP. And in this process, we actually use two molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. Now in the second phase, we can call it the energy return or payoff phase is when we actually gain an additional four ATP molecules uh, in the process. So that's why we're talking about a net gain of 2 ATP. The process of glycolysis, glycolysis will use 2, but give you back 4. So you have a net gain of 2 ATP molecules. Now the entire process is strictly controlled by enzymes. It's under enzymatic control as you're going to see in the subsequent slides. So it's very easy to manipulate that process by controlling the activity uh, of each and every one of those enzymes. So what we have at the bottom of the screen right there it's basically uh, glycolysis in a nutshell, right? This is glycolysis down here. So we have our glucose, and the input or the entire process is going to 
utilize 2-NAD, nicotinamide iodine dinucleotide, that's in its oxidized form, 2-ADP, and two inorganic phosphate groups right there, which are going to be converted into 2-ATP. So this inorganic phosphate, these two molecules of inorganic phosphate are going to be coupled to the formation of uh, two ATP molecules, and similarly, that NAD will be reduced to form two molecules of NADH, the dehydrogenase form of the molecule. Water is also going to be produced as a byproduct. So what we have to the right of the screen right here, those are the key products. Those are the products of those are the products of glycolysis as a process. So the net gain of two ATP, we have two NADH and we also have two pyruvate from each molecule of glucose. So specifics, let's delve into it. So I already told you it's a 10 step process. Step one through to step 10. Let's go, each, let's go over each and every one of them in a very detailed, uh, in a very detailed way. So